Somebody said it couldn't be done. But you with a chuckle replied that maybe it couldn't, but you would be one who wouldn't say so till you tried. So you buckle right in with a trace of a grin on your face, and if you worried, you didn't show it. Because you started to sing as you tackled a thing that couldn't be done, and you did it. Somebody scoffed, oh, you will never do that. At least no one has ever done it. But you took off your coat and you took off your hat, and before we knew it, you'd begun it. And with the lift of your grin, and a grin on your face, without any doubting or quit it, you started to sing as you tackled a thing that couldn't be done, and you did it. There are thousands to tell you that it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesy failure. There are thousands to tell you, one by one, the dangers that wait to assail you. But just buckle it in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and begin it. Just start to sing as you tackle the thing that couldn't be done, and you will do it. Good morning, Atlanta. I said good morning, avid Atlanta. To all of you who are new to AVID, you are embarking on a task that many claim cannot be done. Many have said, oh, those kids are not college material. They are not worth the amount of time and resources it takes. But I applaud you. Your presence at this institute says, I will buckle right in with a trace of a grin on my face. If I'm worried, I'll hide it. I'm starting to sing as I tackle a thing that couldn't be done, and I'm going to do it. To those of you who are not new to AVID, you already know, or you're in the process of getting to know, the real deal about AVID, the power of wicker, and the meaning of the AVID family. One of my favorite phrases among educators is, all students can learn. Unfortunately, there are significant numbers of educators who say that, but don't really embrace it. They say it until little Zeke shows up in their AP English Lit class. Then it becomes, he doesn't belong in this course. Oh, he'll never pass my class. Or when little Zeke shows up in their AP US History, or AP Chemistry, or AP Physics, or AP Calculus class, each time I hear, oh, he'll never pass my class, some in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Florida, Tennessee, Georgia, and every other state have said it can't be done. But all of the AVID teachers, principals, coordinators, and site teams chuckled as they replied, we are the ones who won't say so till we have tried. And your presence at this institute sends a strong message that you're lifting your chin with a bit of a grin on your face without any doubting or quit it. You've already started to sing as you tackle the thing that couldn't be done, and you will do it. Those who say it can't be done are the same ones saying this mission, the AVID mission, is impossible. However, your mission, and you've decided to accept it, is to transform Johnny, Mary, Jackie, Chico, Natasha, Pac, Nishvar, Maria, Keisha, Jorge, and thousands of others into successful college-going, college-ready students. The difference between you and those who say it's impossible is they look at the head, while you, on the other hand, you look at the head and the heart of every student. You see, individual determination is about the heart. AVID doesn't produce determined students. Rather, AVID takes determined students and turns them into successful students. And that doesn't happen by accident. AVID teachers, in their multiple roles, bring out the best in their students. They instill in students a drive 
to make them, the students, want to do their best so they won't disappoint their avid teacher. I mentioned the multiple roles of the avid teacher. You see, the avid teacher is first and foremost a great teacher. Students want not to disappoint their teacher. Secondly, the avid teacher is a counselor, guiding avid students along their academic paths. Again, the students want to ensure they don't disappoint their counselor. Third, the AVID teacher is an advisor, providing advisement on non-academic issues. Yet again, AVID students want to make sure they don't disappoint their advisor. And last, in most cases, in some cases, the most vital role is that of being mama. And sometimes that's literally taken to be mama. Other times, it is taking on mama-like traits. In the role of teacher, the avid teacher is a master at teaching Cornell notes and Cornell note-taking, test-taking strategies, inquiry methods, various forms and styles of writing, collegial learning strategies, and on and on and on the list goes. In the role as counselor, the avid teacher plays a key role in getting Lil Zeke into AP Calculus, AP Chemistry, and AP Physics. In addition, the avid teacher is a key player who ensures that little Zeke doesn't weasel out of AP Physics simply because it's hard work. The avid teacher may be in the role of advising little Zeke that the job he has is interfering with his schoolwork and he needs to explore reducing the number of hours or perhaps changing jobs. Little Zeke may also be advised that his girlfriend, Erica, his heartthrob, his love, his boo, <laughs> is more of a liability than an asset <laughs> to his academic growth and achievement. In other words, she is taking up too much of his time, attention, and energy. And last, the avid teacher becomes mama, or like mama, to many of the avid students. The relationship between avid students and their avid teachers often become lifetime relationships. There's a saying that many, if not all of you, are familiar with. Students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You see, caring doesn't mean being a softy. Caring doesn't mean low expectations or low standards. Caring doesn't mean letting students skate by. Caring does not mean no discipline. Instead, caring, I submit, means having high expectations, having high standards, not letting students skate by, and being disciplined. Caring is tied to that familiar aura called relationship. AVID provides the environment for the much needed relationships many of our students need. Relationship provides personal connection many need to develop the self-confidence to fulfill their potential. Relationship, you see, is based on love and care. The terms love and like are different. Love is the emotion that carries the desire for the best for the person you love. Educators should want the best for every student. Therefore, we must love every student. Like, on the other hand, means I endorse your behaviors. Oftentimes, we cannot endorse the behaviors. behaviors. Therefore, we may not like everyone. We do not endorse all those behaviors. But we must categorically love everyone. Let me shift gears for just a moment and make a few remarks about the times we are living in and the state of our environment. Because of the state of the economy, some are letting budget cuts cause a loss of vision and determination for our students and their academic achievement. One of the sayings that I live by is when you're surrounded by alligators, don't forget that your mission is to drain the swamp. You see, as we go through these troubled times of budget cuts, layoffs, lack of adequate supplies, 
and the stresses associated with all of these, it's critical that we all maintain our focus on providing the best education for all of our students. We cannot fall short on providing the environment that enables our avid students to develop to their full potential. In addition to maintaining vision and determination in times of turmoil, we must also ensure that we remain ethical in all of our activities. As we execute our responsibilities, ethical and moral standards must be uncompromised. As leaders and role models, the challenges we are facing provide the stage for us to demonstrate that same fortitude we teach our students. That fortitude, perseverance, and wise decision making. We must demonstrate those. We must practice the things that we have been teaching. Again, when I was in the military as a reference point, a senior officer shared with me some guidelines about rules and standards. His guidance was, there are four things about having rules and standards. Number one, you must have rules and standards. You cannot run an organization, a business, a school, a classroom, or even a household without having rules and standards. Number two, you must teach the rules and standards. You cannot assume that by telling students to take notes that they know the rules and the standards. They must be taught. We can't assume that students know the academic and behavioral rules and standards. They too must be taught. Number three, you must enforce the rules and standards. Don't ever have a rule or standard that you do not plan or cannot enforce. If it is a rule that all students take Cornell notes, then it is to be enforced. Number four, and probably the most controversial of the four, but number four, you must follow the rules. We live in a time when others do as we do. They are much less likely to do what we say when what we do is different. If you ever have any reservations about the power and influence of a good avid teacher, please allow me to share about one student who benefited from the teachers who cared about their students. One who benefited from teachers who relentlessly demanded academic excellence and high achievement. One student who benefited from teachers who insisted on good, respectful behavior. You see, this young man was the son of sharecropper parents living on a cotton farm. For those not familiar with sharecropping, sharecropping is about two steps above slavery. This young man's father graduated cum laude from the second grade, and his mother graduated cum laude from the third grade. But his teachers along the way took his individual determination and turned it into academic excellence. His first grade teacher, Mrs. Smith, picked him up every morning and took him to school when he was four years old. His third grade teacher, Mrs. Johnson, insisted that he work all the math problems once she discovered that he tended to finish the math work before the other students. His fourth grade teacher, Ms. Madison, made him do two reports when others had only one. His sixth grade Teacher, Mr. Foster, his remedial reading teacher, taught him how to speed read rather than just being able to pass. His seventh grade teacher, Mrs. Johnston, repeatedly put him in front of the class to teach the other students. His eighth grade teacher, Mrs. Moore, ensured that he was in the most challenging classes. His ninth grade teacher, Ms. Dantzler, took him on the college campus and enrolled him in summer college math courses. His 10th grade biology teacher, Ms. Thompson, urged him to attend a National Science Foundation sponsored Summer Science Institute. Mind, now mind you, they had no money to finance such a venture, but they found a way. His 10th grade Algebra II teacher, Mr. Ray, made him double up in the number of math courses he was taking each year. But when the guidance counselors told them it couldn't be done, 
they chuckled and replied that they would not give up and they wouldn't give up until they had tried. So because of those teachers, with the absence of academic support at home, that young man graduated number two in his high school class. And today he has a doctorate and is a retired colonel in the Army. You see, that young man is me, little Zeke. Let there be no doubt in your mind, all of you sitting out there have an awesome responsibility. Nobody said it would be easy. No matter how tough it goes, don't quit. As written in the poem, when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but do not quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's club. And he learned too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown. You see, success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. As you meet with your sight teams and attend your morning strands, know that you are the ones to do what others say can't be done, and you cannot nor will not quit. Thank you, Atlanta, and have a great week.